Finally, in this um, third video, we're going to look at the arthropods. Uh, arthropods are the uh, largest of the phylums that we will be looking at. And uh, this is going to include um, all of the various insects. For those of you who love spiders, uh, it'll show you the spiders, um, the scorpions. Um, yeah, you're going to enjoy this. So phylum arthropoda is the largest of all the animal phylums. Three-fourths of all the known animals are arthropods. The characteristics of arthropods is that they have a very tough exoskeleton. When we uh, dissected our um, grasshoppers, you remember that we used our scissors instead of scalpels because we had to cut through that very difficult, thick exoskeleton. They also have segmented jointed appendages and they have an open circulatory system. The classes of the arthropods include the arachnids. The arachnids are going to be our scorpions, our spiders, our ticks, our mites. The crustaceans. Our crustacean um, example is going to be our crayfish. It has two pairs of antennas. Uh, the diplopoda, which are the millipedes. They have twice as many legs as centipedes. The chilopoda, which are the centipedes, and then the insecta, which is the largest and greatest diversity of the different classes. Thought you'd want to see this nice picture of a bird eating spider. For those of you I'm thinking of that just love these pictures of spiders. Now, here we have some various um, shrimp. This top left that we're looking at over here. Now this one is a, um, it's known as a peppermint shrimp or a boxer's shrimp. And these guys are just wonderful to have in saltwater tanks. Uh, over here on the uh, top right, this is known as a fire shrimp. These are also just wonderful little guys to keep. And down here on the bottom, this is a cleaner shrimp. Many times, your fire and your cleaner shrimp, you'll be working on cleaning your um, aquarium, and these guys will just jump right on your, your arm and start trying to clean your arm for you. Uh, as they grow, uh, they all lose their, uh, their tough uh, exocarp, and uh, they're very vulnerable at that time because um, their, their soft body parts is exposed, so they tend to hide in the aquarium. And then many times you'll see the shrimps will, will eat those exocarps to try to get some of that nutrients and that chitin back into their bodies. Now this one over here is a harlequin shrimp. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, had thought about keeping one of these in my aquarium at one time. Unfortunately, they have a very, very distinct uh, diet. They only eat the tube feet off of starfish. So in order to keep this, I would have to keep starfish and sacrifice the starfish to the shrimp, and I just could not do that. But I have kept these other three over here. They're just wonderful shrimps. They're just beautiful in God's creation. And as we set up our saltwater tank next year, I'm hoping to keep some of these so you can have that experience. Now here we're looking at a, a very common thing that's done in biology classes is, is to do an insect collection. And this is showing the proper way to, to pin those organisms. Um, I ran across this when I was visiting Honduras a couple years ago. Uh, but you can just uh, look at how they, um, not only how did they pin them, but if we were to zoom in, you would see the location, you would see the identification, they, the date that they collected the organism. And of course, I had to show you the collection of various arachnids that were collected. And here we have our Lepidoptera, or our butterflies. And I just never get tired of looking at the beauty of God's creation. Uh, most of your Lepidopteran are keyed out and classified based on the branching uh, of the, the, the structures within the wings. And so here we have an owl. But look up here at the beauty of, of this uh, butterfly. And can you see the owl structures? Here we have it right here. And then check out this one right here. And it just amazes me when we look at the beauty of God's creation and ju just what an artist that the Lord is. So uh, with regards to the test, the two uh, organisms you need to know the structural components of will be the grasshopper and the crayfish. 
Starting off with the grasshopper, the body's divided into three regions. We have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Within the thorax region, you'll see this structure here called the tympanum. That is the ear of the grasshopper. In humans, the tympanic membrane is the eardrum. You'll notice in the head area that the antenna are not branched. We call this uniramus. We have the compound eyes. Between the compound eyes, and I'll show you a different picture in a moment, we have the simple eyes. Those are known as ocelli, O-C-E-L-I. The function of the uh, ocelli is uh, to detect light intensity. It's not used for actually seeing anything, but they believe that when a uh, grasshopper jumps, this helps the grasshopper to to see the sea level or the uh, horizon in order to, to jump properly. We can also see the spiracles, little circle structures right along this area. The spiracles are the equivalent of the nose of the grasshopper, and this is where it breathes, uh, brings oxygen into the body. We can look at uh, the tail area and seeing that that's V-shaped, that indicates that it's a female. Looking at the internal structures, uh, again, the grasshopper has a closed, uh, excuse me, has an open circulatory system, so it does not have um, the, the blood vessels to the level that we think of. Um, it does have the malpigian tubules. The malpigian tubules are the kidneys. This picture right here does not show the tracheal tubes. It does show some air sacs, but the spiracles um, open up into the tracheal tubes, so that would be the equivalent of, say, our trachea going down into, say, our lungs, and that also helps for breathing. Here we can see how that works, where we have the spiracles opening up into the tracheal tubes and then going down into those air sacs. Again, we can look at this right here and tell female because of that V-shaped ovipositor. Uh, looking at the face, again, we can see the antenna are singularly branched. That means they are uniramus. We can see the compound eyes, and you can see the ocelli. Those are the simple eyes. Uh, the nose is called the frond, and then you'll notice that right here in the mouth area we have the labrum that covers the mouth parts, and you would see how we would have to remove the uh, labium and the labial uh, palps in order to get to the mouth area. Right over in this area you can see the difference between our uh, male and our female, and again the male, the, the tushy area is rounded, the female it's V-shaped for laying the eggs. Moving on to our crayfish. Our crayfish body is divided into two sections. Um, remember that the grasshopper was three, but on the crayfish it's two. We have our cep uh, cephalothorax region there, and then we have the abdomen here. Uh, we can see the compound eyes, the nose area is the rostrum. We have the antennas, and we have the antennules. Now what I've tried to do here is to outline the antennules. You can see that it's branched, that's called biramus. I came up here, tried to draw that out, and so when we have it branched, the outer branch is called the exopodite, the inner branch over here is called the endopodite. When we uh, come over here and we look at the legs, uh, the pinchers are called the chelopods. The uh, walking legs right here are called the parapods, P-E-R-I-P-O-D-S. That is a, a test question, parapods. The covering over the grasshopper that, or, excuse me, the crayfish, that tough covering is the carapace. Coming back to the abdomen region, the center area here on the tail is the telson. The two outer areas there, and then on this side over here and here, those are the uropods. If we flip this guy over, here we can see that branching that shows it, that it is a uh, biramus, and this outer is the exopodite, that inner one there is the endopodite. Again, we can see the walking legs, those are the parapods. We can see the celloped, which is the pinchers. And then back in this area here, we see the swimmerettes. Now the swimmerettes are used to help move water over the gills. Uh, 
The gills are just under the carapace and they're also to help with reproduction. The scientific name for the uh, swimmerettes are pleopods and that will be a test question. Again, the swimmerettes are called pleopods. Here we have removed the carapace so you can see the inside of the, um, the crawfish. You can see the gills located here, the intestines. You can see the stomach right there, the green gland. The um, green glands help to remove waste from the crayfish. Got the digestive glands there. So typically when one eats a crayfish, they are eating the, uh, the tail area. Some people like to um, suck the head. So if you're, you break it off, you're sucking that head there, getting all that juice. Uh, you're getting the digestive gland juice. You're also getting the green gland juice, which is some of that uh, excretions, the urine and the waste that's being removed from the crayfish. Yummy!